vision of a Viksit Bharat at 2047. Our journey through this conference has been nothing short of enlightening. Inspired by Dr. Ambedkar's economic vision, our conference explored pivotal themes such as women in the economy, social progress, good governance, environmental sustainability, and energy efficiency, and emphasized prax practices in of inclusive growth. Moreover, discussions on finances, entrepreneurship, marketing, and technology illuminated pathways for a business success. Thus, the conference has been successful in representing collaborative efforts towards shaping a Viksit Bharat. That's in celebration of this success, we have a very special guest among us. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join me in extending a very warm welcome to our chief guest of the valedictory, Sri Prafal Ketkarji, with a round of applause. It is indeed It is indeed an absolute honor of having him here. Shri Ketkarji has been serving as the editor of Organizer Weekly since 2013, bringing him with a wealth of experience spanning over two decades in the field of research, media, and academics. His distinguished career also includes contributions as a member of the advisory committee at the School of Journalism, Delhi University. Shri Ketkarji is also renowned for his insightful writings on a myriad of topics, including international politics, foreign policy, and a keen focus on China, Hindutva, and Bharat as a civilization. He has played a pivotal role as a member of the editorial team in the compiling of works of Pandit Deen Dayalji across 15 volumes. Moreover, Sri Ketkarji's literary prowess extends to two published books, 29 scholarly articles, and two entries in the Encyclopedia of India, among other plethora of contemporary articles. Please join me in giving a very hearty welcome to Sri Prafal Ketkarji, whose contributions whose contributions continue to enrich our understanding of a contemporary Bharat. I request Principal Professor Rabi Narayan Kursar and Conference Secretary Dr. Rajkumar Prasad to kindly felicitate Sri Ketkarji for, for gracing this session. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, Professor Badri Narayanji, member. <laughs> Professor Badri Narayanji, member IC, SSR, and UGC, and director at GB Pan Social Sciences Institute in Allahabad. Professor Narayanji is a pioneering scholar whose work has profoundly impacted the discourse on lower castes and Dalit communities, along with holding a very rich profile of research in areas of culture and history. His seminal work, Republic of Hindutva, offers a very compelling exploration of Indian democracy, while another work of his, Fractured Tales, and wheels often overlooked aspects of the society. With a remarkable ability to unravel complex narratives, Professor Narayan's as uh, insights enrich our understanding of a contemporary Bharat, which is again very instrumental for the vision of 
of the Vikset Bharat that we are discussing to be achieved in 2047. So we are indeed privileged to have Professor Badri Narayan gracing us with his presence in this session. I request Professor Principal Kar and Dr. Uh, Rajkumar Prasad to welcome him with a token of gratitude. Let us seek the blessings of Goddess Saraswati before we begin the valedictory session. And for that, let me call upon Anushant to recite Saraswati Vandana. वरदाई नी वरदे करे 
हम नित तुम्हारी साधना मातेश्वरी वीडेश्वरी सरस रंग नर नारी जग के सरस रंग नर नारी जग के हो सभी स्वर ताल में माँ सत्य अहिंसा न्याय के पथ पर चले काम नातेश्वरी वीणेश्वरी मातेश्वरी 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 वीणेश्वरी Thank you, Anushan, for that soulful start to our event. Moving further, I request co-convener of this conference, Dr. Deepika Kumari, to present a brief report of the conference. Thank you, Dr. Aman, and uh, very good evening to all of you. Men are mortal, and so are the ideas. An idea needs propagation as much as a plant needs watering; otherwise, both will wither and die. These inspiring words of Dr. Ambedkar encourage us to innovate, transform, and relentlessly pursue his vision for this great nation. The two-day international conference on Ambedkar's perspective on the dynamics of Indian economy, a way towards Vikshit Bharat 2047, organized by Ambedkar Study Circle, Shamlal College, in collaboration with the De Department of African Studies, University of Delhi, has now come to a glorious end. It was our opportunity and honor to have the former President of Bharat, Shri Ramnath Kovindji, as our chief guest, who enlightened us with. anecdotes from dr ambedkar's life as well as reiterated the unparalleled stature of dr ambedkar he congratulated the college on the choice of the theme of the conference that celebrated the economic vision of dr ambedkar especially because dr ambedkar is usually perceived to have either been the key architect of the indian constitution or as a social reformer alone but he was also a great visionary and way ahead of his time he spoke about the early challenges faced by dr ambedkar and the enduring contribution he made towards the social and national welfare including his advocacy for social reforms and population control professor yogesh singh vice chancellor university of delhi further discussed the intellectual legacy of dr ambedkar including his views on governance and economics principal of shamlal college professor rabi narayan kar in his inaugural speech expressed gratitude to the all the dignitaries and guests and emphasized on the theme of the conference sabka saath sabka vishwas sabka vikas further highlighting the struggles of dr ambedkar his resilience and unwavering desire to serve humanity at large we are we were honored to have shri pk mishra ji professor gajendra singh and professor pk mishra join us in the online mode in our plenary session where in various themes such as security matters agriculture's role in development and the need for inclusive and sustainable development were discussed at length the technical sessions and the student conclave later in the day had some thought provoking presentations on the theme of dr ambedkar's perspective on the dynamics of the indian economy and the role of women in indian economy dr ambedkar Ambedkar was of the strong view that the progress of the women is the true litmus test for the progress of the country. The second day was dedicated entirely to the topical sessions with a specific focus on the role of women in the economy, social progress and good governance 
environmental sustainability and inclusive growth finance entrepreneurship and startup management marketing and business technology system human resource management rural economy and supply chain operations all these topics are pertinent in the present economic scenario and will be crucial pillars for viksit bharat mr nikhil shrivas in the plenary session highlighted the importance of ai and its role in the transformation of the economy principal sir further emphasized on, on the need to be flexible in the fourth revolution which will be led by artificial intelligence professor munim kumar barai however cautioned for the ethical use of artificial intelligence and how technology has to be responsibly used to take this great country to greater heights thank you thank you deepika ma'am under the visionary leadership of our honorable principal sir this conference has taken shape as a testament to his commitment to baba sahib's ideologies of equality and social justice even in his professional space under his visionary guidance slc has been able to actively uphold and promote the principles of inclusivity and equality through its arm of ambedkar study circle This conference has been yet another pioneer and successful event organized under his wise guidance. Thank you, sir. I hence now call upon uh, Principal Sir, pilot of this two-day international conference, to give us his address. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar to the dignitaries present on the dais, Manya Prafull Kethkar ji, editor, the organizer, Professor Badr Naran Tiwari ji, director, G B Pant Social Science Institute, Prayagraj, Dr. Triveni, convener of this conference, Dr. Raj Kumar Prasad, secretary of this two days international conference, and my dear colleagues. dignitaries of the dais dear students at the outset i extend a very warm welcome to the dignitaries present on the dais i know how busy all of them are but still they could take out their time for us and present on this occasion so on behalf of shamlal college fraternity i extend a very warm welcome to you sir shri prafull ketkar ji and secondly professor badr naran was supposed to join us yesterday but still since yesterday it could not materialize but we are so thankful to you and it was happened to be like that so from virtual mode he came physical so a huge round of applause for you sir <laughs> so i want to do i had the prepared speech of four five pages but i won't take much time i know the time is running out at the outset i must congratulate the ambedkar study circle iqac of our college for having thought of this conference and organizing it where more than 80 papers are presented so big congratulations to all you all the team members who are present here and secondly one thing we must there has to be some takeaways from this conference so i hope the whatever the papers are presented the takeaways from this papers must be come to in a publication shape so when unless we publish it that is the onus also lies with the organizers so we must produce something then only we can add value to the baba saab's thoughts that can also carry towards a vikasit bharat that is the only expectation i have from all of you uh once again i congratulate i won't take much time now i because of the paucity of time we have two honorable guests so we are all eager to hear from them so thank you with this thank you thank you namaskar thank you sir for your address and for being a guiding light for all of us your words always inspire us I now call upon Professor Badri Narayan Sir for his kind words of encouragement for our endeavours. Please, sir.
thank you so much for inviting me and uh, providing this opportunity to interact with you and uh, respected uh, dr um, ravi karji who is the principal and uh, rajkumar ji uh, triveni ji and uh, uh, sri prafull ketkar ji who is a very enlightened scholar and uh, so i am very thankful to all of you that you provided me opportunity to to be here and become part of your this program i i was uh, expected to become part of uh, this program as online mode but i had to come here for a meeting and that time i was on the uh, in the travel when <laughs> my online presentation was scheduled so i told him that if you want i can join with you uh, offline mode uh so this topic is very relevant and you have already discussed many thing i have seen your entire uh, the program and i think nothing has left you have discussed each and every aspect of economic dimension of uh, baba saheb ambedkar the presence in the history and politics of india and the world so uh, uh in that way and uh, since we have to listen uh, in detail sri uh, prafull ketkar ji i'll say few things and then i'll uh, um, i'll i'll stop myself and uh, uh, you know the the ambedkar has a very uh, uh, multiple dimensional person and he has a and it it happened with a great scholar when uh, you have many things in your life some of your aspects may be ignored or may be uh, not much addressed and some of your aspects of the personality become dominant so it happens so similarly happened with dr ambedkar and uh, his as we were discussing in ravi ji room that his economic ideas were not much discussed indian in indian academics and politics uh, but you know uh, the his his uh, economic idea he uh, ambedkar as economist uh, is very uh, uh, he has a pertinent role but i see his economics not merely economics but political economy economics which go to the politics so he his economics you can't see as as economy economist economics but as political politician economy also economist also so economy which goes which makes politics economy economic idea which makes society economics idea which makes the time so his economics was the economics of making time time uh, when he was uh, in the indian politics you remember the time and that time was time when uh, when capital means currency was walking like maya maya means no one was able to decode currency that the speed of currency that time and many economics we are working on that to understand tap reframe re uh, appropriate or appropriate the the movement of currency that time and ambedkar intervened in that time as economist as a student of economics as economic thinker and and reshaped the entire discourse on currency uh, Uh, relocated those discourse in indian context and uh, try to push the the indian aspects in in relocating those kind of uh, um, movement of currency discourses so i am not going to talk much about that i am just going to tell that he was the person who was on the one hand very modernist and on the other hand he was also traditionalist traditionalist in the term of uh, understanding indian social structure uh, 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 reinterpreting it and reusing for making modern society so you must have uh, observed that he on the one hand he discussed industrialization he tried to push the entire land debates and linking industrialization with the uh, the nature of farming nature of uh, of the land uh, inheritance in india he he uh, values various traditional ideas also in his thinking he uh, he modernized few ideas but he also uh, gave importance to traditional ideas so 
he was a scholar who trained in the west he was modernist but he never uh, he was kehte hai na jisko ki aage chalte hue bhi piche dekhte rehna no this a punar nava kind of thing jo jo modernity ke sath jo engagement hai it will be ideal when you see uh, ahead and but also used to see your back so ambedkar was in that way uh, very constantly relooking indian society and reframing it and making a new discourse so industrialization uh, uh, the land uh, the farming corporate uh, corp, uh, the, the cooperative farming and various kinds of discourses he used to bring in that and today you know this is the new liberal time what we call new liberal time and i used to call that this is the second phase of new liberal time the first phase was when the 90s after 90s new liberal economy was introduced that was the time of suspicion sanka doubt debate uh, questioning of new liberal time ki ye bada kharab hai kya hoga kab future aa jayega to aise ho jayega hamari naukri chali jayegi ye ho jayega a lot of suspicion we had now we have full trust in one way a trust is evolving on this new liberal time uh, new aspirations new dreams we have accepted globalization we have accepted this in one way we are flowing in a, this market uh, constructed uh, social space uh, we have our imaginations and dreams sari aspiration society of aspiration time of aspiration is growing in that time remembering ambedkar economic idea has a very important role important uh, discourse important meaning why you know at this time is a time of mobility and migration and ambedkar was a person who pushed the debate of migration in indian society and he supported migration he he supported uh, the, the 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 argument of migration migration would be emancipatory for dalits and marginals he used to say uh, there was a very interesting debate between uh the gandhian uh, mode of understanding society and ambedkar uh, ways of so- understanding society that was around the village so he tried to reinterpret village and he he pushed that uh, marginals should leave uh villages and go to work in the industrial uh, fa- uh industrial companies and they should go in the city city will give them uh, idea of light and they will uh, uh, pr- uh, make progress in the society so Uh, this new liberal time which is time ba- is of migration and in this time his uh, debate about migration is very valuable although there are critic also uh, kanshiram who was a disciple of ambedkar and he was uh, he evolved his politics on ambedkar right line he used to sharply critic his uh, idea of migration as emancipation for dalit and, mar- and marginals and he used to say कि कोई कहीं से भी जाए लेकिन साथ में अपना पूंछ लेकर जाता है पूंछ मीन्स कास्ट तो ही यूज टू से कि किस शहर में चले जाने से कास्ट नहीं खत्म हो जाती है जो अंबेडकर का ये जो आइडिया था मैं मैं उनका शिष्य हूँ बट इसमें हमें समस्या है तो ही यूज टू पुश दैट आर्गूमेंट कि वहाँ जाके स्लम्स में रहते हैं रिफ्यूज उसमें रहते हैं एंड दे गो विथ ए टेल ऑफ कास्ट सो कास्टनेस से मुक्ति इज नॉट due to uh, it will not happen when you uh, only through migration you will have to do some more thing anyway that migration debate is very interesting and similarly uh, the the market economy uh, which is creating a kind of uh, make usko uh, what i would like to say uh, not a mukti but various uh, small small trajectory to the youths recently we are working in a in a various district towns of uttar pradesh and we are interviewing uh, the youths mostly marginal community youths about this time and uh, and you know uh, earlier we had a uh, answer that agar aapko naukri nahi hogi to kya hoga khet mein jaake kaam karna padega gaon mein naukri nahi milegi to labor ka kaam kar lenge kaise zindagi guzarenge no that was a majboori thi ki ye karna padega now they are saying नौकरी नहीं मिलेगी तो क्या होगा मिल जाएगी तो अच्छी बात है नहीं मिलेगी तो कुछ धंधा कर लेंगे धंधा कर लेंगे बिकॉज देर आर लॉट ऑफ प्रधानमंत्री रोजगार योजना सड़क एवरी विलेज इज कनेक्टेड विद सड़क हाईवेज रोड्स ठेला खोमचा पान के दुकान नो लॉट ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ कॉन्टेंट क्रिएटर्स कुछ नहीं होगा तो 
यूट्यूबर हो जाएंगे फलाना जर्नलिस्ट इज अर्निंग फिफ्टीन लाख रुपीज पर मंथ वाई नॉट वी सो आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट दिस मार्केट इकोनॉमी इज गोइंग टू गिव एवरी थिंग टू एवरी वन बट इट इज गिविंग मल्टीपल ट्रेजेक्ट्री टू टू प्रोग्रेस and and the jo and and the so jo uh, the question which this seminar is what is going to what is what will be the contribution of ambedkar ideas in the making of viksit bharat in 2047 viksit bharat as is defined by uh, conceptualized by pradhan mantri narendra modi ji will be not only the bharat of market economy this will be the bharat which may be uh, is uh, which may progress itself by आत्मनिर्भरता फाइव पंच प्राण जो द कॉन्सेप्ट विच ही हैज ट्राई टू टू कॉन्सेप्चुलाइज डी कॉलोनाइजेशन ऑफ माइंड आत्मनिर्भरता अपने रिसोर्सेस की पहचान री इन्वेंटिंग योर ओन रिसोर्सेस एंड 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 ऑल्सो इंगेजिंग विद द मॉडर्निटी इंगेजिंग विद द मार्केट इंगेजिंग विद द वर्ल्ड विथ योर ओन रूट so first of all you strengthen your root and then you engage with the others then you will acquire noor as you aspire and you know ambedkar similarly ambedkar in his entire thought process he, on the one hand he was deeply rooted in indian cultural traditions in various ways uh, even you if you read his uh, uh, writings he refers upanishad he refers vedas he refers various kinds of indian traditional texts i never seen a scholar of his time uh, so much uh, so much uh, uh, very uh, deeply uh, discussed uh, the entire indian uh, the traditional text who was trained in columbia who was uh, very modern in his mind and in his entire uh, ideas he was interacting with the uh, uh, you can say he may be critical no he may be critical but critical for what critical for uh, evolving a root a ways a, a a kind of essence through which marginal community can remake their future so the future is is very pertinent in his discourse and you know after after gandhi and nehru gandhi and ambedkar there is no in indian politics who has conceptualized future kabhi aapne kisi pradhan mantri ke bhashan mein future shabd suna hai aaj tak किसी के भी लेक्चर में याद करिए काइंडली रिमेम्बर यू विल फाइंड नो आफ्टर गांधी एंड अम्बेडकर फ्यूचर टर्म इज दिस अपियर्ड फ्रॉम इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स एंड इट इज डायग्नोस्ड बाय लोहिया दैट इंडियन पॉलिटिकल पार्टी हैज लॉस्ट देयर कैपेसिटी टू री इमेजिन द फ्यूचर इट इज टोल्ड बाय लोहिया एंड अगेन पी एम मोदी वेन ही अपियर्ड इन द पोलिटिकल सीन ही ट्राई टू विजुअलाइज द फ्यूचर and future means 2014 india 44 47 india kya hoga 1000 bhasal mein bharat kya hoga so he is trying pehle kya tha 5 years planning 5 5 saal ki planning future was scattered and divided in in 5 years form but he uh, he in that way tried to conceptualize a bigger uh, meta time notion of meta time a uh, notion of future and ambedkar himself he was very worried about the future of the marginal community and about the future of indian society so future was very pertinent in his entire rereading of the traditional texts so in that way uh, ambedkar uh, the entire economic idea and this economic idea has traveled to the political economy and political economy turned as a social ideology is closely interlinked and it's all to decode the 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 dominance various structures of dominance but dominance and understanding the relations with uh, really close relationship between dominance and the dissent today what we do we always glorify dissent but but we don't understand that dissent is a not a permanent bhav of indian society which are made correct to ki pratirodh jo shashvat bhav nahi hai शाश्वत भाव क्या है प्रेम है करुणा है दया है एंड एंड डिसेंट इज ए इज ए इज ए काइंड ऑफ कंडीशनल सिचुएशन इफ यू आर एंग्री विथ समथिंग यू कैन डू डिसेंट जैसे ही आपका वो खत्म कर दिया जाएगा नाराजगी के कारण यू विल एक्सेप्ट द थिंग्स विच यू हैव सो डिसेंट विच वी ग्लोरिफाई इन आवर एकेडमिक्स एंड पॉलिटिक्स इट वॉज नॉट द शाश्वत भाव ऑफ इंडिया विच अंडरस्टूड आर मेड कर अंडरस्टूड 
एंड आपको पता होगा कि वेन अम्बेडकर वॉज इन अम्बेडकर इफ यू सी द रिदम और ऑफ अम्बेडकर डिबेट्स वॉट वी डू सेलेक्टिवली वी टेक्स ए वन थिंग एंड पुट इट्स एज योर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स कि देखिए अम्बेडकर ने तो ये कहा था और फिर दूसरे को आप एकदम ध्वस्त कर दीजिए इट्स लाइक लाइक डूइंग डिबेट्स इन ए कॉलेजेस बट अम्बेडकर इफ यू सी द पैटर्न ऑफ अम्बेडकर डिस्कवर्स इट्स लाइक ऑर्केस्ट्रा नो सेंग समथिंग गोइंग अ हेड कमिंग बैक देन गोइंग अ हेड कमिंग बैक सो ऑलवेज ही ट्राई टू रिपोजिशन हिमसेल्फ बेस्ड ऑन द इंडियन सिचुएशन सो इन दैट वे वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी स्कॉलर with his his completeness and his completeness and we should not fracture scholars according to our own need and we should not exploit his his or her or her own ideas for making ourselves uh, our uh, relevant or our argument relevant so ambedkar in the last uh, in the last word which i two thing i will say and then i'll finish my discussion ambedkar said that uh, uh, he was very much arguing about the identity but he said ki ek samay aayega jab sabko samudra mein boodh ki tarah samana hoga yani boodh jaise samudra mein mil jata hai we will all have to resolve in a ocean of oneness so you can see the person who was arguing for entire uh, the, the 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 struggle for the various communities and uh, the identities he is saying ki that boond jaise samudh mein samata hai waise we will have to resolve ourselves dusri baat when he was dying i have heard from many many people i have read from somewhere that he was listening kabir song rehna nahi desh birana hai and and when he was dying so you can understand you can see the person who was a modernist who came with the ideas to to emancipate society he was so traditionally rooted and also putting his argument in entire context understanding indian society more deeply than than uh kahte hain rootless modernist he was not rootless modernist modernist uh, so here with these words i am going to finish my statement today and we will uh, listen uh, proful ji on this in detail thank you so much thank you so much sir for sharing your profound insights on ambedkar in uh, perspective and how baba sahib's perspective can be the anchor in our lives so moving further uh, we extend a heartfelt invitation to our esteemed chief guest shri praful ketkar ji for his address please sir respected uh, principal uh, ravi narayan ji professor uh, badil narayan ji conveners of this uh, international conference esteemed faculty members and uh, dear young friends ये थर्ड uh, रो के पीछे बताइए हिंदी में बोलना है इंग्लिश में बोलना है हिंदी में भी बोलू यार हिंदी में बोलने से ना कोई विद्वान मानता नहीं है प्रॉब्लम ही है एंड अंबेडकर न्यू दिस प्रॉब्लम अंबेडकर न्यू दिस प्रॉब्लम सो ही इंसिस्टेड ऑन लर्निंग इंग्लिश बट ही न्यू द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस ऑल्सो so he didn't want to learn english at the cost of indian languages so i'll i'll try to be bilingual badri ji ne you know he has already touched upon uh, uh, the 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 neglect that we have done or rather injustice we have done to uh, dr ambedkar as an economist but uh, that is not the only aspect that we have neglected because if i see uh, the trajectory and when uh, uh, 125 years of uh, uh, ambedkar's uh, birth anniversary was celebrated i was part of one important committee 
uh, and Ambedkar International Center was just coming up then. And we were trying to uh, uh, get the entire collection of uh, uh, 18 volumes that Maharashtra government had already published uh, in Marathi, and we were trying to get it in English and republish it. Uh, and then I realized many facets of Ambedkar are actually untouched. Forget about neglected. Like, for example, I, I'm in media. As a journalist, I don't see anybody talking about Ambedkar as a journalist. Frankly speaking, after coming back to India, his journey in public life started as a journalist. From Mukanayak to Bahishkrut Bharat, to Labour Party's mouthpiece, to his last publication was Prabuddha Bharat. And almost all these publications, he actually edited. And still nobody talks about Ambedkar as a journalist. Ambedkar was a great educationist. In fact, while starting his uh, uh, college uh, first in Mumbai and then it, in uh, uh, Aurangabad, his People's Education Society, every year he used to ensure that he delivers a chairman's address on the theme of education. And still nobody discusses Ambedkar as an educationist. Ambedkar was a pioneer in starting the water policy in India. And many people do not know this. Because we are talking about 2047 and many believe that 2047, just data, a very big next stage oil hone wala and data may be the biggest issue of conflict. Water is another issue where we can see conflicts. And in 1943, when he was part of the Viceroy's cabinet, his basic insistence, many people, you know, give credit to Pandit Nehru about uh, most of our initial dams. But it was originally Dr. Ambedkar who started talking about managing water resources and creating the systems of public distribution of water. Another aspect, because I have been a student of international politics, another aspect which I, 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 I terribly, terribly feel that we, we have neglected Ambedkar is perhaps his thoughts on uh, geostrategic and geoeconomics. And there I feel that the theme of this conference is the most important when we are looking ahead for 2047 and the theme of Vikasit Bharat. If, if somebody asks me, what is the greatest challenge for next 25 years to handle any economy in the world? If I ask a youngster, or perhaps even the faculty members, which country has the highest proportion of GDP to date ratio today? Which country has the highest GDP to date ratio today? Is the America. Is the United States of America. 104% per Pakistan ki economy hum collapse mante hai. 120% per Sri Lankan economy pure world ke samne hath phailane pad rahe the. America ki economy aisi economy aaj 134%. Har 100 rupya America ka jo hai uspe 134 rupya ka karz hai. And still we consider America as a developed economy. American population 4% hai, America ka energy consumption 32% hai. And still we consider America as a developed economy. And why this is important? Because 
the biggest challenge in next 25 years is going to be the issue of de-dollarization. Whether we will be able to de-link our rupee from the exchange rate of dollar. Aajkal IT wale log hai na, wo dollar ka rate bada jata hai to khush ho jate hai. क्यों क्योंकि वो तो नए तरह के कुली है ना वो अमेरिकन रेट्स पर उनको एक्सचेंज मिलता है तो उनको लगता है कि रूपी कमजोर हो जाता है तो अच्छा है लेकिन उनको ये समझ में नहीं आता कि उनकी जो डे टू डे लाइफ की जो चीजें हैं वो उनको ज्यादा पैसे देकर खर्च करनी पड़ रही है खरीदनी पड़ रही है तो उनको यह लगता हो कि एक अमेरिकन प्रोजेक्ट मिल गया तो मेरी सैलरी एक से एक हो गई लेकिन उनको यह समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि वो 15000 के बदले में उनका जो डे टू डे लिविंग कॉस्ट है वो 35 टू 40000 बढ़ गई एंड दिस वाज द सेम प्रॉब्लम दैट इंडिया वाज फेसिंग व्हेन डॉक्टर अंबेडकर वाज राइटिंग हिज पीएचडी थीसिस फर्स्ट टाइम एवर भारत में दो ही चीजें चलती थी एक मोहर चलती थी मोर यूज टू हैव अ गोल्ड एक्सचेंज रेट मतलब जितने सोने की वैल्यू है उतनी ही मोहर की कीमत है देन वी स्टार्टेड हैविंग द आइडिया ऑफ रूपी स्पेशली द मुगल कोर्ट स्टार्टेड हैविंग द सिल्वर कॉइन्स सिल्वर से ही वो संस्कृत में रूपे रुपये का मतलब लिटरली सिल्वर होता है रुपये कानी तो वो सिल्वर से आया रुपया तो इट यूज टू बी द सिल्वर मिंटिंग व्हेन ब्रिटिश केम हियर इट यूज टू बी अ सिल्वर मिंटिंग कॉइन्स उस समय जो सिल्वर मिंट हो रहा है उस कॉइन की जितनी वैल्यू है उतनी ही उस पैसे की वैल्यू है मतलब वो यदि मान लीजिए 28 रुपए का चांदी का कॉइन है तो उसकी वैल्यू 28 रुपए ही रहेगी आज क्या हो गया है आज हम कॉइन तो 69 पैसे में बनाते होंगे लेकिन कहते हैं इसकी वैल्यू 10 रुपए है या नोट तो शायद ढाई रुपए में बनाते होंगे लेकिन कहते हैं इसकी वैल्यू 500 रुपए है हाउ डिड दिस स्टार्ट Because the British government or the government of India under British Raj introduced this concept called exchange rate. And it was not just an exchange rate, it was a double exchange rate. So on the one hand, gold standard was introduced and the other hand, the pound standard was instituted, the sterling standard was introduced. And in this background, Ambedkar writing his PhD thesis, the problem of rupee. And that problem of rupee still persists. Please try and understand. That eventually became the foundation for creation of RBI. And that problem of rupee persisted because the solution that Dr. Ambedkar gave were still not implemented even after independence. What was it talking about? And when it comes to, generally when it comes to the, हमारे ज़्यादा तर जो राष्ट्र पुरुष है, उनके बारे में चर्चा करते हुए, हम बहुत बार बहुत बड़ी गलती करते हैं. पहली गलती ये करते हैं कि हम preconceived notion लेकर चलते हैं, तो उनको एक frame में, खाचे में बैट कर ही हम देखते हैं. तो जैसे प्रोफेसर बद्रीनारायण जी ने कहा कि उनको एज अ सोशल रिफॉर्मर एज अ प्रोपोगनिस्ट ऑफ रिजर्वेशंस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मेकर इसके आगे हम डॉक्टर बामबेडकर को देख नहीं पाते ये पहला प्रॉब्लम होता है दूसरा प्रॉब्लम ये हो जाता है कि हम उनको इतना पूजने लगते हैं कि किसी ने उनके बारे में जो बता दिया है वो सच मानने लगते हैं और इसलिए उनके ओरिजिनल राइटिंग्स पर जाते ही नहीं I always feel that if you really want to understand 
the thought process of a person go to his original source don't just go to the original source also locate the situation in which he is making is this argument क्योंकि एक विशिष्ट परिस्थिति में वो अपना आर्ग्यूमेंट दे रहे होते हैं उस समय का सोशल कॉन्टेक्स्ट अलग होता है मतलब रूसो कहता है मैन इज बॉर्न फ्री एवरीवेयर बट एवरीवेयर इज इन चेंज और वो इतना आइकोनिक स्टेटमेंट बन जाता है और क्योंकि सारा जो प्रोटेस्टेंट मूवमेंट चल रहा है यूरोप में जो इवेंचुअली फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन का भी रीजन बनता है अमेरिका में रिपब्लिकन पार्टी का भी एक आइडियोलॉजी का रीजन बनता है तो ये रिवोल्यूशनरी प्रोटेस्टेंटनिज्म जो था वो भी मैन की बात करता है एंड सडनली इन 1948 व्हेन द यूनाइटेड नेशन चार्टर वाज रिटन Mrs. Roosevelt was the chairman of the drafting committee. और वहां पर भारत की एक प्रतिनिधि होकर खड़ी होकर पूछती है कि इफ मैन इज बॉर्न फ्री एंड ऑल मेन आर इक्वल वेयर विल वुमेन एंड चिल्ड्रन गो एंड आई एम श्योर मोस्ट ऑफ यू मे नॉट बी नोइंग हर नेम प्लीज शी कुडन आस्क अ क्वेश्चन टू हर ब्रदर forget about united nations her name was dr hansa mehta she was the first vice chancellor of sndt university first woman vice chancellor of sndt university mumbai she was also member of the constitution constituent assembly a gujarati sari wearing common woman of india is asking this question sitting there in new york if you believe man is born free where will women and children go why i am giving this example because when ambedkar is talking on women's issues again you have to roll relocate ambedkar in the context otherwise there is a fear to see ambedkar as anti women representation and therefore i will use four important reasons and four important trajectories for next 25 years where ambedkar can help us the first important trajectory i talked about is de dollarization and his thesis the problem of the rupee is the most important text when we want to understand especially the students of economics sorry i am not uh, basically uh, you know uh, मैं एक ऐसा व्यक्ति हूं जो आजकल एकेडमिक्स में नहीं हूं लेकिन पत्रकार पूरी तरह से मुझे पत्रकार भी नहीं मानते तो नाइदर हियर नॉर देयर काइंड ऑफ लेकिन वो रवि नारायण जी का एक आदर और प्रेम है कि उन्होंने मुझे वेलिट्री सेशन में बुला लिया बट आई आई फील माई सेल्फ टू बी अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ भारत अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ भारतीयता i i i try to go to the original sources and i don't talk without original sources so when uh, wh why why ambedkar's thesis is most important because ambedkar is the first person who is talking about the financial administration he is not just talking about economy please try and understand Rabiji is from commerce. He is also CS, so he can understand better. It is, and he is also a principal. So it is not just about economy. It is basically about financial administration. The first ever person in entire India's freedom struggle to talk about the financial administration is Dr. Baba Sahib Bimrao Ambedkar. And what does he say? is a almost a 257 page uh, thesis he says and uh, 
money is a pivotal to every individual in a society and without the use of money the distribution of anything can be a matter of disagreement and disturbance most importantly it will be noticed that i do not propose to go back to the recommendations of the faller committee faller committee was the committee which introduced this exchange rate between the sterling pound and rupee so the gold became the secondary so we abhi abhi jaise hum yahan se kahin pe jana hota hai to hum kya karte hai rupee ko dollar mein convert karte hai अमेरिका में जा रहे हैं तो डॉलर यूज हो जाता है दूसरा और कहीं जाना है तो डॉलर को फिर से उनकी करेंसी में कन्वर्ट करते सो वी पे कन्वर्जन ट्वाइस ओके अब एक तरफ तो आप कह रहे हो कि गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड है तो मैं भारत से बिकॉज इंडिया एज द हाइएस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ गोल्ड रिजर्व सरकार के पास भले ही नौ घरों में तो पक्का है मंदिरों में तो पक्का है मैं 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 सोने का सिक्का लेकर जाता हूं इज अमेरिकन गवर्नमेंट गोइंग टू एक्सेप्ट दैट एज अ करेंसी अगेंस्ट डॉलर नो देन व्हाई डू यू कॉल इज गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड यही प्रॉब्लम उस समय हो रहा था क्योंकि हमको रुपए में और सोने में सिक्के मिंट करने की आदत थी और उसका एक्सचेंज रेट हमको एक्सपेक्टेड लाइन पर नहीं मिल रहा था इसलिए ही इज क्वेश्चनिंग द फॉलर कमिटी ही सेज मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु एब्रप्टली एग्री टू द स्टोरी ऑफ द एक्सचेंज स्टैंडर्ड दे हैव पॉपुलराइज द नोशन दैट द एक्सचेंज स्टैंडर्ड इज द स्टैंडर्ड ओरिजिनली कंटेम्पलेटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया i find this a gross error he says all those who have regretted the transformation of the indian currency from a gold standard to gold exchange standard have held that everything would have been all right if the government had carried out in toto the recommendation of the faller committee i do not share that view on the other hand i find that indian currency underwent that transformation because the government carried out those recommendations while some people regard the report as classical for its wisdom i regard it as classical for its nonsense cannot be more categorical about the british policies dekhiye 1906 mein dada bhai nauro ji apna fundamental thesis likh rahe hain और वो कह रहे हैं कि पॉवर्टी एंड अनब्रिटिश रूल इन इंडिया भारत की गरीबी का मूल किसमें है तो ब्रिटिशों की इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी में है वहां यहां से जो कच्चा माल वो लेकर जा रहा है और वहां से लाकर वो बेच रहा है उसमें प्रॉब्लम है आंबेडकर उसको निगेट कर रहे हैं आंबेडकर कह रहे हैं नहीं वो प्रॉब्लम नहीं है केवल प्रॉब्लम यह है कि ब्रिटिशों ने जो एक्सचेंज रेट किया हुआ है उसके कारण हमारा रुपी का दिन ब दिन डिवेल्युएशन होता जा रहा है गोल्ड के कंपैरिजन में और उनका पाउंड स्ट्रांग होते जा रहा है जब तक इसको एड्रेस नहीं करेंगे भारत का भविष्य विकसित नहीं हो सकता वो उस समय पाउंड के संबंध में था आज डॉलर के संबंध में पिछले पांच साल में एक चमत्कार हुआ है एंड मेनी इकोनॉमिक डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड डेफिनेटली पीपल लाइक रघुराम राजन वुड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस एक चमत्कार हुआ है 17 कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड हैव एक्सेप्टेड भारत आइडिया ऑफ डी डॉलराइजेशन एंड दे हैव डायरेक्टली स्टार्टेड ट्रांजैक्टिंग इन रूपीज मतलब आज यदि हम दुबई के साथ कोई व्यापार करते हैं रशिया के साथ कोई व्यापार करते हैं तो पहले क्या होता था कि हम रुपया से डॉलर में पहले कन्वर्ट करेंगे या वो रूबल से डॉलर में कन्वर्ट करेंगे हमको डॉलर में हमको डॉलर से फिर रुपी में हर बार डॉलर को उसका कमीशन मिल रहा है दैट्स वाई अमेरिका इज फ्री टू प्रिंट द करेंसी जिस दिन यह बंद हो जाएगा अमेरिकन इकोनॉमी और को 17 कंट्रीज 
have accepted to transact with India without dollar. It's a revolution. Many people do not understand this. And 52 countries in the world have started directly transacting through UPI. So on the one hand, technologically, we have taken a stride. What, what Dr. Ambedkar was saying that our currency should have a direct say when it comes to the trading. आज वो रुपए का मूल्य रुपए की ताकत ये डॉलर के तुलना में कितनी है इस पर केवल निर्भर नहीं रहेगी ये गति कितनी फास्ट होती है अगले 25 साल में इस पर भारत का विकसित होना ना होना निर्भर रहेगा हमको भारत के नागरिक होने के नाते भी और भारत के विद्यार्थी होने के नाते भी इसको ठीक से समझना पड़ेगा एक महत्वपूर्ण बात और समझनी पड़ेगी ये जब थीसिस लिखा जा रहा था तो केन्स यूरोप के सबसे बड़े अर्थशास्त्री माने जाते थे केन्स जिन्होंने पंपिंग थियोरी सरकार का रोल क्या है तो मार्केट में जो फ्लूडिटी है करेंसी की उसको मेंटेन रखना ये सारा जो रेपो रेट वगैरह की जो चर्चा चलती है बहुत सारे इकोनॉमिक्स बैठे इसलिए मैं मेरा इकोनॉमिक्स का ध्यान ज्यादा दिखाऊंगा नहीं पत्रकार जितना है उतना ही है लेकिन केन्स वाज द फर्स्ट पर्सन फर्स्ट इकोनॉमिक्स टू टॉक अबाउट पंपिंग ऑफ मनी सो दैट द डिप्रेशन कैन बी काउंटेड काउंटर्ड अब ये 1920s और 1930s का पीरियड है प्लीज समझिए व्हेन व्हेन द वर्ल्ड फेस द ग्रेट इकोनॉमिक डिप्रेशन और उस समय अंबेडकर अपने थीसिस में लिख रहे हैं 1923 है और मैं रविनारायण जी को सही में इसके लिए धन्यवाद दूंगा और वन ऑफ द रीजंस दैट आई हैप्पीली एक्सेप्टेड दिस इनविटेशन मैं कल कल रात को ही मैं तमिलनाडु से लौटा हूं I had a very hectic travel, लेकिन फिर भी आज के लिए मैंने उसका one of the main reasons is this March Ambedkar's the problem of rupee and its publication has completed a centenary. 31 March 1923 को publish हुआ था the problem of the rupee. और उस समय केन्स प्रोमिनेंट थिंकर है प्रोमिनेंट इकोनॉमिस्ट है और उनके बारे में अपने थीसिस में अपने प्रीफेस में डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लिखते हैं ऑन द थियोरिटिकल साइड देर इज नो बुक अदर देन दैट प्रोफेसर केन्स विच मेक्स एनी अटेम्प्ट टू एग्जामिन इट्स साइंटिफिक बेसिस साइंटिफिक बेसिस ऑफ एक्सचेंज रेट बट द कंक्लूजन ही हैज अराइव एट आर इन शार्प कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद दो ऑफ माइंड our differences extend to almost every proposition he has advanced in favor of the exchange standard this difference proceeds from the fundamental fact which seems to be quite overlooked by professor keynes that nothing will stabilize the rupee unless we stabilize its general purchasing power that the exchange standard does not do that standard concern itself only with symptoms and does not go to the the original disease indeed on my showing if anything it aggravates the disease ye ambedkar ka jeevan ke sare hi kshetron mein ek fundamental approach humko dikhta hai jab sare freedom fighters is baat ki charcha kar rahe hai कि हमको राजनीतिक स्वतंत्रता स्वाधीनता कब मिलेगी स्पेशली जब अंबेडकर सीन पर आते हैं भारत के 1920 के बाद पॉलिटिकल सीन पर आते हैं और 1927 में महाड़ का जब सत्याग्रह हुआ तो उनका एक वो प्रोमिनेंट लैंडमार्क माना जाता है जब फर्स्ट सत्याग्रह दैट ही एक्चुअली अंडर टुक फॉर फॉर फ्रीइंग द द लेक ऑफ महाड़ इन महाराष्ट्र उसमें जब सारे फ्रीडम फाइटर्स इस बात की चर्चा कर रहे हैं कि हमको पॉलिटिकल इंडिपेंडेंस कैसे मिलेगा तब अंबेडकर इस बात की चर्चा कर रहे हैं 
कि वाई डिड वी लूज अवर इंडिपेंडेंस गो टू द रूट कॉज वो इस बात की चर्चा नहीं कर रहे हैं कि यह कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सबसे अच्छी है या सबसे खराब है वो कह रहे हैं कि इसका स्पिरिट कितना भी अच्छा हो इंप्लीमेंट करने वाला गलत हुआ तो इसको जलाने वाला सबसे पहले मैं रहूं ही इज ऑलवेज एड्रेसिंग द रूट रूट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम वो जाति का भी प्रॉब्लम केवल सुपरफिशियल लेवल पर एड्रेस नहीं करते इफ यू रीड हिज हु शुद्रास his entire concept of endogamy and exogamy and how it is impacting economy is the fundamental thesis of not just political economy sir but also even social economics lack of mobility in the society actually reduces the possibility of creation of wealth that is his fundamental idea behind the the the, the close caste system which we need to address बट आई कम टू इट लेटर लेकिन यहां पर यह समझना ज्यादा जरूरी है क्योंकि आजकल मुझे रविनारायण जी का पता नहीं लेकिन सामान्यतः सामान्यतः अपने गाइड के आ, साथ ऑर्ग्यूमेंट करने की स्टूडेंट की पीएचडी लेवल पर तो हिम्मत नहीं होती है एंड हियर it's uh, professor edwin kenan who is the phd supervisor of dr ambedkar he is writing an introduction to his phd thesis when it got published which is very very eye opening what does professor uh, kenan write i am glad that mr ambedkar has given me the opportunity of saying a few words about this book as he is aware i disagree with a good deal of his criticism criticism of british uh, you know exchange standard policy in 1893 i was the one of the few economists who believed that the rupee could be kept at a fixed ratio with gold by the method then proposed and i did not fall away from the faith when some years elapsed without the desired fruit appearing and he refers to the economic review of 1898 i do not share mr ambedkar's hostility to this system nor accept most of his arguments against it and its advocates but a phd supervisor is writing about his student and that time remember he is not india's constitution maker he is just a phd student in a foreign country and that is also in london school of economics he is writing but he hits some nails very squarely on his head and even when i gave thought him quite wrong i found a stimulating freshness in his views and reasons an old teacher like myself learns to tolerate the vagaries of originality even when they resist severe examination such as that of mr ambedkar speaks in his practical conclusion i am inclined to think that he is right of course this is a gracious approach of a supervisor also that professor kenan decided to accept this that as a supervisor and as an economist i initially felt that what dr ambedkar is arguing is wrong but now i feel that perhaps he is right apne student ki originality par अपने सुपरवाइजर को अपने ओरिजिनल थॉट पर रीथिंक करने के लिए मजबूर कर दिया ऐसा वो पीएचडी का थीसिस अनफॉर्चुनेटली पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया में द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ रूपी पर कोई भी इकोनॉमिक ने अपना डिजर्टेशन लिखने का प्रयास नहीं किया एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई इंसिस्टेड ऑन दिस पार्ट कि हमको यदि द सेकेंड प्रॉब्लम दैट professor badrinarayan briefly touched upon but the problem of land that is another critical problem that uh, dr ambedkar deals with he is of the firm belief that unless you deal with agriculture as an industry 
you are not going to solve the problem of land. Fragmentation of land. Chote kisani din ba din hote jana. Mere pas, mere pas to nahi hai. Lekin mere pas maan lije do ekar ki zameen hai. Aur mere do bete hai. To un mein aage divide hogi. Unke bachcho mein divide hogi. This fragmentation of land is only going to create future problems, not just for the agriculture, but also for the national wealth and our food security. Ambedkar had this vision in 1920s and 1930s. Please remember. And that's why he says, Another important aspect, and ye dono aspect ek dusre se linked hai, aur ane wale 25 saal mein iski bhi disha hamko tay karni hai, and Ambedkar can definitely help us there. The second most important aspect that he links to all this problem is the question of population. In fact, he is the first person who talks about the national population policy. He says, and again I quote, मेरे लिए बहुत प्रॉब्लमेटिक होता है ना तो कोई भी ये कह सकता है कि ऑर्गेनाइजर के एडिटर ने ये कह दिया आई एम नॉट सेइंग नथ एनीथिंग ऑन माय ओन आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू पुट व्हाट अंबेडकर सेड इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट दैट्स ऑल ही सेड द पॉपुलर पॉपुलेशन प्रेशर इज गिविंग राइज टू एन आर्मी ऑफ लैंडलेस एंड डिस्पर्स फैमिलीज एज वेल इट कैन बी स्टॉप व्हेन एग्रीकल्चर इज मेड प्रॉफिटेबल Nothing can open possibilities of making agriculture profitable except a serious drive in favor of industrialization. For it is industrialization alone which can drain away excess of population into gainful employment other than agriculture. This term gainful employment is very critical. And that's why we need to rethink. Freebies is not going to solve the problem of Bharat. You getting free electricity or free money in your account, whichever, whoever is the politician or political party promising you, is not going to solve the problem of Bharat. If a nation has to create the wealth, it has to be gain full employment. You are getting something against the labor that you are delivering. That is gain full employment. And Ambedkar is saying that unless you have your sector specific planning sector specific planning of the ratio in your economy you cannot have a real gainful employment you cannot have this kind of economy where 60% of population is dependent on agriculture but the return of agriculture is hardly 2% 3% 8% maximum 12% this has been the case in post-independent India. So you need to define the proportion and the basis of which you need to plan your economy. In next 25 years, this is going to be the biggest challenge. If we really want to take our agriculture in that direction, then we require drastic agricultural reforms where the fragmentation of land is reduced, minimized, cooperatized, and so that the collective farming in some form or the other is turned into a profit-making enterprise. Similarly, we need to have a population policy so that we need to have some kind of proportionality. And again, this word used by Dr. Ambedkar, proportionality of sectors and proportionality of population and your resources. Unless you have this, you cannot have a developed economy. And the last but the most important point, because he is talking this everything in the context of planning, many people tend to believe that Ambedkar, and he, at some places he using is using the word socialism also. So some people believe that he is going on the Marxist line or the communist line. In 1937 at Mysuru, when he is 
launching the first political organization called depressed class mission as a president of that mission he is giving a speech and he is he is openly saying when a journalist is asking him are you are you uh, going on a you know communist line and he categorically saying i can be anything else but a communist and why is saying so the answer lies in his book the buddha and karl marx his idea is very clear the violence and dictatorship cannot be an alternative to democracy as a as a strategic thinker i look at him very differently and that that can be you know some other time i would i, I because i have written about it very strongly is his views on cold war his views on china and ussr sorry uh, 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 us and ussr relation in the cold war context india's foreign policy towards china uh, his views on nehru's panchashil i i very categorically written on this but i'm not going to touch upon that i'm sticking to economy and here he is clearly saying that can i can be anything else but a communist why because he says that uh, the 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 problem with communism is it cannot sustain as an ideology without violence and dictatorship and my ideas of democracy cannot go along with violence and dictatorship and therefore ambedkar clearly says he has written very uh, uh, a good piece on on tibet also he has spoken extensively when he resigned from uh, nehru's cabinet on india's foreign policy in 1956 uh, 1955 in rajya sabha he gave very uh, important speech on on uh, on india's foreign policy and he is talking about this uh, rather ridiculing nehru's idea of non alignment uh, in in this uh, great uh, world power rivalry but the most important aspects or rather questions that he is raising about entire communist ideology he is saying the russians are proud of their communism but they forget that wonder of all wonders is that the buddha established communism so far as the sangha was concerned without dictatorship it may be that it was a communism on a very small scale but it was communism without dictatorship a miracle which lenin failed to understand and why it happened so because he says because because communism denied the importance of religion dharma spirituality dhamma whatever you want to call it he he is very categorical about it that without having that essence he, he wrote a very wonderful essay uh, buddha and future of his religion and and he says we forget that we know buddha taught ahimsa but we forget that besides the ahimsa and religion social freedom intellectual freedom economic freedom uh, political freedom equality fraternity justice these were the cardinal values that buddhism taught and that's why i'm accepting buddhism so his idea of future india if we one wants to understand is clear when he discussed actually the debate on india's constitution's preamble original preamble had only three words justice liberty and equality the unique contribution of ambedkar to indian constitution is not actually just reservation but he said without fraternity the idea of liberty and equality is in vain and again i am quoting ambedkar i am not i am this is these are not my words bandhuta ke siwa swadhinta vyaktigat swatantrata aur samata dono nirarthak hai 
हमको आने वाले समय में जो विकसित भारत खड़ा करना है उसमें हमको हमारी फॉल्ट लाइंस को भरना सीखना है बंधुता के आधार पर समता लाना है बंधुता के आधार पर हमारे स्वतंत्रता का उपयोग करना है और इसीलिए डी डॉलराइजेशन एग्रीकल्चरल रिफॉर्म्स पॉपुलेशन पॉलिसी एंड फ्रेटर्निटी एज द बेसिस ऑफ इक्वालिटी एंड लिबर्टी दीज आर द फोर क्रिटिकल थीम्स कमिंग फ्रॉम अंबेडकर इकोनॉमिक थॉट विच आई फील is going to give the foundation for vikasit bharat 2047 i hope that this conference and the deliberations that happen will provide a strong foundation for next 25 years and start a new kind of churning where ambedkar can be recontextualized to uh, develop bharat which is decolonized for renationalize thank you thank you very much Thank you sir we are truly fortunate to have had the privilege of hearing from you today and we thank you for putting forward very pertinent issues uh, of contemporary india and ambedkar's perspective as solution to these uh, issues uh, moving ahead i would like to request principal sir to kindly felicitate the chairs and co-chairs of our concurrent sessions that happened uh, after the post lunch uh, i would like to invite over uh, dr anurag maurya Uh, Mr. Manish Kumar and Dr. Deepika Kumari to be felicitated by Principal Sir. thank you sir thank you ma'am this conference has been a remarkable journey filled with knowledge collaboration and inspiration um i request you to please maintain silence and may we carry forward the lessons learned and connections made so let us immerse ourselves in the celebration of talent and unity all the dignitaries at the dais are requested to step down the dais and take the seat along with the audience to enjoy the cultural celebration of slc students
Hello, hello. Now we will start with our cultural performances. Music is the universal language of mankind. Where words fail, music speaks. Up next, we have a performance that promises to captivate us all. We have Sumit from Swaragam, the music society of Shamlal College. He is going to charm us. with a soulful rendition of the song kacha ghada so now let's welcome sumit as he takes the center stage ek kacha ghada hu main ek kacha ghada hu रही है दुनिया मेरी नादानियों पे ताने कस रही है दुनिया मेरी कहानियों पे पर मैं काम कर रहा हूँ 
मेरी सारी खामियों पे कल ये मारेंगे ताली मेरी कहानियों पे कल जो बदलेगी हवा ये सारे शर्माएंगे हमारे अपने हो के के बाहें घर माएंगे क्योंकि जिद्दी बड़ा हूं मैं एक कच्चा गड़ा हूं मैं एक कच्चा गड़ा हूं मैं थैंक यू सो मच What a captivating performance his melodious voice carries the message of resilience and determination inspiring us all to overcome obstacles and reach for the stars inequality causes problems by creating fissures in societies leaving those at the bottom feeling marginalized or disenfranchised said by nicholas christoph born into a society plagued by inequality and prejudice dr b r ambedkar defied all norms and obstacles to pave his own path towards enlightenment and empowerment he became one of the most prominent leaders in the fight against discrimination and oppression leading movements for the rights of the marginalized communities dr b r ambedkar has emerged as a beacon of hope for the downtrodden and oppressed challenging the cause of social justice for all the spirit of dr b r ambedkar lives in the hearts of those who continue to fight for a world free from discrimination and oppression guided by his vision of just and equitable society in the spirit of inclusivity we present a poignant act inspired by the life and legacy of dr b r ambedkar the members of jharokha the dramatic society of shamlal college has come together to honor baba saheb's time timeless efforts towards social justice and equality may this message resonate with all of us
Amitya Shava Chandala Madhya Mauna Vidushita Bhopalu Shrutya Kalashai Sahasrao Se Sahetya Thank you. 
बाबा साहिब के मार सत्याग्रह और मनुस्मृति को दहन करने के पश्चात उनकी लोकप्रियता पूरे विश्व में फैल गई देश भर में समानता की एक नई लहर दौड़ उठी इसी लोकप्रियता की लहर के चलते बाबा साहिब को संवैधानिक सभा का एक महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा भी बनाया गया
What a marvelous performance. Next. In a world filled with chaos and division, there is one thing that unites us all, that is music. And when music is infused with the spirit of patriotism, it has the power to inspire and uplift even the weirest of souls. The sound of a trumpet playing the national anthem, the beat of a dream, echoing the heartbeat of a nation, these are the sounds that stir our hearts and remind us of the sacrifices made by those who came before us. Let us remember that no matter what are our differences, we are all bound together by the threats of patriotism and music. For when music and patriotism come together, there is nothing we cannot achieve. हल्का सा इको दे दीजिए हल्का सा हल्का सा इको दे दीजिए
की तरफ से आप सभी का धन्यवाद करता हूं आभार प्रकट करता हूं दो दिन का जो दो दिवसीय जो अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन हुआ इसके लिए जो भी अतिथि हमारे पास आए मैं उन सभी का हार्दिक धन्यवाद करता हूं रामनाथ कोविंद जी पूर्व राष्ट्रपति मैं उनका आभार प्रकट करता हूं हमारे वाइस चांसलर योगेश सिंह का मैं उनका आभार प्रकट करता हूं और आप सभी जो लोग यहां मौजूद हैं जो जितने वक्ता थे जितने पार्टिसिपेंट थे प्रतिभागी उन सभी का आभार करता हूं जो हमारे जितने छात्र इसमें सक्रिय रहे अंबेडकर स्टडी से जुड़े हुए उससे इतर कल्चरल कमेटी से जुड़े हुए परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट से जुड़े हुए मैं सभी का आभार करता हूं मैं पुनः सबका आप सभी का आभार प्रकट करता हूं और आज का कार्यक्रम यहीं समाप्त होता है धन्यवाद ओके थैंक यू एवरीवन वन एंड आर प्रोग्राम विद दिस